Let's take a look now at what element time looks like for your field staff. Your field staff are going to access element time through their phone, tablet, or laptop. In fact, any smart device can access element time because it's browser based. So it doesn't matter whether it's Apple or Android or whether it's a phone or a tablet, everybody can get on it from any internet enabled device. It also makes sure that all these devices are talking to each other in real time so that the second a crew clocks into a site, somebody at the office knows they clocked into that site. It's not stored locally on the phone. Now, the first big concern most people have with element time is their crews. The question comes up, yeah, but will my guys be able to figure it out? Or I'm not sure my guys will be able to figure it out. We built element time for our own landscape company that employs over 125 full-time landscape staff. Now that means it had to be easy to use both for the office and for the field. In order for it to work, we kept element time as simple as possible. You'll see here as we go through the next steps that learning element time should take only about 15 minutes or less. And once your crews get the hang of it and give them a couple of weeks, you'll be pleasantly surprised with the reduction in time spent filling out paperwork by hand, entering that paperwork by hand into a spreadsheet, reviewing those spreadsheets for mistakes, errors, and indiscrepancies, and then entering it all in some other system for payroll. Besides, when you're entering it by hand, most companies don't have timely job site status information. Sure, you may have it, but it's often in a box, or sure, you may have it, but everybody kind of knows it's not correct. Because when you're filling stuff out by paper, the opportunity for error and inconsistencies is enormous. Everybody fills it out differently. Every bookkeeper interprets it differently and the results are unpredictable. Here I am on the element time home screen for a foreman. On this timesheet, it shows me three timesheets they've already filled out. These two have already been approved and this one's been submitted. The foreman can look at timesheets that they've filled out that have already been approved, but they can't actually change anything. They could review things like hours and the jobs they worked on, but it's impossible for them to make changes because the timesheet's already been approved by the office. When they go to create a new timesheet, they're going to go down to the bottom right and click Add New. Notice that all the action buttons in Element Time are pictures, so that if your foreman have difficulty reading or don't speak English as a first language, it's not an issue. They'll learn that the icons and the buttons do the commands they want to do. After they created a timesheet, they need to clock into their first job. Now, this job might be a job for a customer, but it could also be a job at the shop. For instance, shop, setup, and load time. You can create whatever jobs and tasks you want, but it really comes down to how you estimate. When they click the bottom right add button, it's going to prompt them to select a job from our list. Now they can pick from a list of jobs, they can search for a job by name, or they can pick a schedule. So if my crew has already been assigned a schedule, the jobs they're supposed to hit and the order they're supposed to hit them will show up here on the screen. If they're just picking from a master list, Element Time will actually grab the jobs that are closest to them based on the GPS location of their phone. So chances are, if they're clocking in, they're going to be at one of these closest jobs. It makes it easy for the crew. Once I pick the jobs, it's going to prompt me to pick my crew. So as a foreman, you can save your default crew so that you don't have to set it every single day from scratch. But changes are easy. If Pete didn't make it in today and Mary's coming with us instead, I just simply click Pete to take him out of the crew and click Mary to stick her in the crew. Click next to go to the task screen. Now it knows we're on the Acme mall job doing maintenance. The only tasks that are going to appear as valid for the crews are the tasks that you set up at the Acme mall maintenance when you set up the job. So it's impossible for crews to clock into tasks that didn't exist on the job. In fact, they can only clock into the tasks that you want to track for this job. Here I'm going to click grounds maintenance. And I can have different employees working on different tasks, or I can have the whole crew on the same. Click Next, and it can jump and show me some task notes. So if you've set up task notes on the job, you can literally prompt the crews with important notes about the task that's at hand and what they should do when they're there. You can do these in English, Spanish, or both, whatever suits your workforce. The date and the time will show up as today's date and time, defaulted to exactly the time that it currently is. Hit Next and my crew's clocked in. At any point on the job, the crew can click the magnifying glass and they can see live and in real time estimated versus actual hours and an estimated man hours per visit. So they know exactly how many hours were originally estimated 
and how many hours we've spent to date on this job or maintenance contract. Moving to the next job is just as simple as what we did when we clocked into the first one. In fact, crews don't have to clock out of tasks at all. They just clock into the next. The crew's gonna click add a new job and down here, they're gonna pick it. When they click next, again, it confirms that the whole crew is going. If Leela was staying behind to finish up the work, we could untick her and she'd turn light green. Click next, and now I'm picking the tasks from the new job, which is the Able Tree front landscape. Date and time again, and once the crew confirms it, the last step now is it's gonna ask me, what did we do on the last job? These are activities I've set up on the last job. So I wanna track whether we did aeration, whether the crew put down any fertilizer, and whether we installed any mulch. These are all set up as specific activities for specific jobs. I'll click fertilizer and say we put down a bag and a half. My crews could also put in task notes and it will also pull the weather for those of you working in snow and ice if you want to. The weather is an option you can turn on or off depending on the type of work you're doing. When I click save, the last step is that it's gonna check my schedule and it's gonna look for, are there any scheduled events for this job? And in this case, there is. The crew could be cutting or salting or there's an unassigned task on the 23rd. So the crew will click the task that they completed and hit confirm changes and hit okay. And that'll update my schedule on the back end so that your element schedule and your element timesheet are talking to one another. It just indicates that the task got completed. Crews can use the heads button down here to manage their crews and they can add employees to their crew later on in the day. They can add somebody as absent or they can mark somebody as late. That'll keep a record for your office administration on the number of times people were absent and the reasons why. Going back here, the last step for the crew at the end of the day is to clock out. They're gonna do that by going to the clock out button. Crews can clock out everybody at once or only some people, if just some are clocking out early and others will clock out later. Again, I'm gonna get task notes for my last task, but here I'm gonna move on until this button here shows submit. Submit is the last step for the form in each day. What it's gonna basically do is review the timesheet with them, make sure everything's perfect, and then submit it back to you at the office. So when I click submit, it's first gonna ask me if we took lunch break today and what time and how long we took it. If I don't wanna take lunch break, I untick everybody and that indicates we didn't break for lunch today. Start time and end time would appear here. Obviously this time sheet's a very short time sheet as we just did it for this video, but their start time and their end time and their total hours, including the lunch deduction, would appear here for review. So the foreman could review it both for themselves and with his staff or her staff before submitting. Hit save and it'll say it looks ready. Are you sure you wanna submit? And they click okay. Now that timesheet shows up as submitted for the office and it'll show up on the office's timesheet approval screen so that they can review the results of the timesheet and approve it for payroll and job costing. For more information about LMN time, check out our website at www.golmn.com.